So Apple's butterfly keyboard and touch bar. Two bold ideas that were supposed to redefine the MacBook. One promised a more thinner, stable keyboard. The other replaced physical keys with a futuristic touchscreen strip. But instead of being revolutionary, they became some of Apple's most controversial features. So the real question is, were the features really that bad? Or has its reputation overshadowed its reality? Let's have a look. the MacBook Pro 2018. It's a 15 inch and I've lived with it for many many years and to be honest overall the keyboard works well for me but there is some minor issues I'm going to share with you today. So in this video I'm going to show you how the butterfly keyboard works, why it failed so badly and the touch bar loved by some, hated by others and eventually abandoned. And yet here we are in 2025 with my MacBook Pro 2018 still using the butterfly keyboard and touch bar. So Apple called the Beat keyboard a butterfly keyboard basically because under each keyboard there is like a hinge shaped like a butterfly. Instead of pressing it down like scissors, these wings flap open and shut like a butterfly. The original idea was to make the MacBook thinner. So instead of the old scissor switch, this design uses a two wing hinge that keeps the key stable but allows for an ultra low profile. The keys were very shallow but look sleek and help Apple make the laptop slimmer. So the biggest difference is that you can see notably, because it's not actually that big difference unless you already have looked into it. The butterfly, the 2018 which is mine, it has a wide left arrow, tall up and down arrows. Whereas with the Magic Keyboard, it's, it's got an inverted T arrow, so it's got a small left and right and full size up and down. And with the Butterfly, it's a 0.7 millimeter travel flat and sharp click. Whereas with the Magic 1.0 millimeter travel, slightly taller, softer feel. Reliability, the butterfly is prone to sticky, miss, missing keys from the dust, whereas Magic is redesigned to scissor mechanism for fewer issues and be more stable when you press it. If you've typed on a normal keyboard with the newer MacBooks, you'll see that the keys move down a bit and bounce back. On the butterfly keyboard, the travel is super shallow, you'll see here. So it feels like you're kind of tapping on a table rather than pressing a button. But what is the problem? The problem is, with so much little space under the key, even a speck of dust could damage it. That means lots of dead keys, missing letters. Imagine typing loads of letters and then you realize loads of E's are missing, do you know what I mean? And I'm not gonna lie, over the years, it is kind of like you do miss letters. I do type very, very fast as well, but I do tend to miss letters, etc. So that's one of the biggest issues I've come across over the eight years I've had the laptop is that, you know, when you are typing away, you do tend to miss letters. And when I am typing on the newer ones, I feel like it's kind of a bit more effort because I'm just so used to this keyboard that I feel like I'm really having to press down on the newer ones. So before we continue on, anyone watching this, do you have a butterfly keyboard or the touch bar? Let me know in the comments. And the touch bar is kind of like having a smartphone attached to your keyboard, would I say? I've never seen one before. It's basically a thin touch screen strip on the top of the keyboard and it replaces the top function of the function of the keys. So the idea would be that the touch bar would change depending on what you're doing. You know, if you go onto an app, it then adjusts. If you want to adjust the brightness or you go onto Safari, you might have tabs or bookmarks or even on Final Cut Pro or wherever you're editing, if you're watching a video, you can like click through the video, for example. Or even when you're typing, it gives you suggestion on the keyboard. It sounds really futuristic, right? But the reality is it's not perfect. So since I've had it, I've had this flashing on the right hand side. Um, I've had this for many years. It's not really affecting me. It's just a little bit annoying. Has anybody else had this flashing issue? If you've managed to identify what it is, has it affected you? Let me know in the comments. But the biggest issue that we have with it is people feel it was missing extra keys that you needed or you have more space on the keyboard. This is a 15 inch, so I personally don't have this issue, but I understand if you are using a 13 inch, you may want more space for your keyboard. I personally don't use it to its full potential. I probably should. I definitely use it to skip free videos, just the brightness, but again, the normal keyboard has the brightness there. For example, on mine, you can see there's emoji, escape button on the standard, brightness, volume. I mainly use the brightness and volume, to be honest. But for example, let's say I open up music. You'll see here, I can just skip through wherever. 
Whereas on the normal keyboard, you don't have that option. So again, I definitely like it. And it's disappointing that the new ones don't have this. Again, controversial, people love it, people hate it. But I think it's really good to see all the sides of the spectrum. And the reality is if you do end up finding a MacBook Pro 2018 or similar years, and it's in a good condition, it's still a very capable laptop. But remember, butterfly keyboards are a gamble. You either love them or you hate them. And the repair, Apple repair coverage has ended now, so you can't get assistance or cover with that. So in summary, the butterfly keyboard has a sleek design, stable keys, works fine most of the time. Not so good, it's shallow feel, occasional missed letters, no repair program in 2025. Touch bar, really fun for shortcuts. Smooth for volume, brightness, playing videos, music, skipping through really, really easy, moving between apps. Not so good. Limited app support, accidental touches. Apple removed it on the newer models. Performance wise, still handles daily tasks. 15 inch display looks great. So that's the 2018 MacBook Pro and the Butterfly keyboard and the touch bar. So it's not as bad as people are saying it is, but it's also not the safest bet considering we're losing any support in the one to two years. But realistically, I've actually not used them yet. So it's kind of like, how often are you reaching out to them to get support? So it's not the safest if you're looking for something that has future proof. Bargain hunters, you may still love it and definitely take a look. But for most people, you know, if you get used to one keyboard, you're used to it. It's just when, when I've been using this and using the newer ones, I definitely feel like more of an effort to type. You know, it just takes time to get used to these kinds of things. So hopefully sharing my experience with you today has kind of given you more of an insight, being almost a decade using this MacBook Pro 2018, the pros, the cons, and what happens along the way in the journey. Don't forget to let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you do like to hear more about my tech reviews, being a user of both Android and MacBooks, I love to share my different experiences with you guys. And if you haven't checked out the newer MacBook, I actually have a video you can check out going over the MacBook Air M2 series, which also shows you the newer keyboard as well. If you guys did like this video, do give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates, tech reviews, AI trends, and more. Thank you guys, have fun.